This is the second part of a IB higher level multiple choice question paper. If you want to have a look at the questions before they're answered, take a look in the links and in the video description. Um, there's a link for the unanswered versions so you can have a go before you watch this video and there's an, a link for the answered versions as well if you want my text on there as well. Okay, question 11. A PD of 12 volts is connected between P and Q. What is the PD between X and Y? Okay, so let's call this one 12 volts and this one 0 volts because the potential difference between those two is 12 volts. Through that, there will be a potential difference across these two of 12 volts. And breaking that down with the ratio, remember the ratio of the resistance is going to be equal to the ratio of the voltage. So the voltage across here must be 4 volts, and the voltage across here must be 8 volts. It's the same situation at the bottom, except this time this one is 8 volts and this one is 4 volts. Remember, the ratio of the resistance determines the ratio of the voltage. And so by the time it gets to X, there is a potential there of 8 volts. By the time the current gets to Y, there is a potential there of 4 volts. And so the difference between X and Y is 4 volts. Question 12. A wave travels along a coiled spring. The graph shows a variation of time of displacement of a point on the spring. Okay, so we've got a nice clear intercept here at 0 0.2 seconds. Um, and this is, a, this is time on this axis. So we can see that uh, 1.5 time periods is 0 0.2 seconds. So the time period for 1 is uh, 0 0.2 seconds divided by... 1.5. The frequency is 1 over the time period, so the frequency is 1.5 divided by 0 0.2, which gives us 7.5 hertz. Question 13. The temperature of an ideal gas is reduced. Which one of the following statements is true? Okay, well, if the temperature is reduced, then the average speed of the molecules is going to be lower. So in an ideal gas, there is no time of contact between the molecules. We assume that's negligible, so it's not that. Again, in an ideal gas, there is no time of contact between the molecules and the wall. We ignore that. We pretend that's negligible as well for an ideal gas. Um, the Molecules collide with each other more frequently. They're not going to collide more frequently because they're moving with a lower average speed, so it's not that. So we're left with the molecules collide with the walls of the container less frequently, which effectively means the pressure is lower, which is true for a lower temperature. So it's A. Question 14. The potential difference across a resistor is 12 volts. The current in the resistor is 2 amps. Four coulombs of charge pass it through the resistor. What is the energy transferred? and the time taken. Okay, so energy equals I V T, and also current is charge divided by time. So time there is charge divided by current, which gives us a time of four divided by two, which is two seconds. So it's not B and it's not D. And then we have Energy is IVT, so energy is 12 times 2, which is 24, times T, which is 2, so that's 48, so it must be C. Question 15. A proton is moving in a circle, radius 1.5 metres. Within a magnetic field of flux density 0 0.02 Tesla. The speed of the proton is that. Okay, so F equals B Q V. Um, what we don't have here out of these four things, we're looking to find V. What we don't have is F, um, but we know that it's moving in a circle. So the force acting on something moving in a circle is MV squared over R equals B Q V. Uh, one of these 
change color. One of these Vs cancels with this V. And so we're trying to find the speed. So the speed is B Q R over M. And that calculates out at 2.9 times 10 to the six meters per second. Question 16. Which row describes the relative ionizing power and the relative penetration power per unit length in, our, in air of alpha particles and gamma rays? Okay, alpha particles are certainly the most ionizing because they're the heaviest and they're the most, they're the highest, they have the highest charge. So they're the most ionizing. Gamma rays are the most penetrating because they don't have any charge and they don't have any mass so they don't get they don't interfere with as much stuff so the answer is c question 17 a sample contains an amount of radioactive material with a half-life of 3.5 days after two weeks the fraction of the fr radioactive material remaining is what okay well two weeks 3.5 days is half a week so after two weeks that's four half-lives so after four half-lives, if we have 100% to start off with, then we have 50% after one, 25% after two, 12.5% after three, and about 6%, 6 percent, 6.25 percent after four. So that gives us C. Question 18, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that the electromotive force induced in a conductor is proportional to... Okay, this is just a simple definition. Uh, it's the rate of change of something. Okay, so it's not A or B because it's how quickly it changes. And it's uh, if you have a coil, then it's also multiplied by the number of turns in the coil, which is the difference between flux density and flux linkage. So we're going to go with D. On the surface of Titan, Saturn's largest moon, a mass of 5 kilograms experiences a gravitational force of 6.8 newtons. What is its speed of impact on the surface when released from a rest height of 5 metres? Okay, so uh, the gravitational field strength is given by uh, force per unit mass. Uh, so in, in this case, the gravitational field strength is 6.8 divided by 5, which is 1.36. Uh, so if g is 1.36, then uh, the change in uh, potential energy is MGH, and that is converted into kinetic energy. So the change in kinetic energy is a half mv squared, and they equate. So a half mv squared equals MGH. The m's can cancel. So V equals the square root of 2GH, where G is 1.36. And the height there is given as 5 metres, which, when you calculate it, gives us an answer of 3.7 metres per second. Finally, question 20. I'll use a different colour to differentiate it from the question above. What would the period of rotation of the Earth need to be if objects at the equator were to appear weightless? OK, well, for an object at the equator to appear weightless, all of the acceleration due to gravity needs to go into the centripetal acceleration. So the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81, and that must equal v squared over r, the centripetal acceleration. Now, also, we know that if something is moving in a circle, then its linear velocity is omega r, which is 2 pi over t times r. If we then substitute that into our as our velocity into this equation here, then we have the then we have nine point eight one equals four pi squared 
r squared over t squared divided by r. So we can cancel that and cancel that. Um, calculating that, putting that into your calculator to calculate t, remember we want the, the period of rotation, which is t there, and that gives us a period of rotation of 1.4 hours. This will give you the period in seconds, and you'll need to convert it into hours for the answer. This was part two of four. Uh, if you want to see the other parts, uh, then either look at the playlist or check the links in the description to the video. Thanks for watching.